I, I give it away. I don't really remember it. Moving on. I would like to spend a little more time here in Tartu, Estonia. I feel as sometimes I rush through these places and dismiss them as nope, no obvious staff or nothing to see here and move on. And I feel as if if I'm going to do this, might as well be a little more thorough because there's so much to see that there's no way it'll ever get finished. So what's the rush? I mean, this is, will be a lifetime worth of research. There's no tell you bored of it, I guess. This will be no, uh, no reason to rush. We'll be here forever. So might as well take my time. The reasons why I, I'm noting these various places as areas of suspicion. I should say areas of like observation. Because this here canal runs through it, or the river, they call it a river. But anything this uniform with is, to me, it's a canal. I might not be right in every instance, but it's, it's the odds of it being a canal more than a river are more likely. Now, I'm not saying they don't intersect with rivers, they uh, originate as rivers, but the prior civilization that lived here would use these as canals. And so along these canals, you often find imprints of the old power grid or the old electromagnetic motherboard situation that the coincidence of them all being near each other and near all these old historic buildings in every country and every city across the world, the odds are just far too much to accept as coincidence. Uh, if there is a cover-up, I believe that it was started long ago and the proponents of it today don't, they no longer know it's a cover-up. They just follow the history. But this place, Tartu, I believe it's the second largest city in Estonia. Scriptopedia here will point out a few reasons that sort of enhance the argument that there's more to this city than just a regular old European town. Home to the nation's oldest and most renowned university is a red flag to me. This place is going to have the oldest theater, museum, all the, uh, the most ancient buildings in the country, which is obviously a red flag to me. They claim it's been around since the 5th century. There's also these multiple events there involving the building of a fort, the fort being burned down, the fort being rebuilt, captured and re captured multiple times including during the northern crusades the brothers of the sword and it seems like they passed it back and forth for a few hundred years or so then Ivan the terrible invaded during the livonian war and bombarded the town somehow in 1558 maybe cannons then you have a jesuit grammar school being established here which is major red flag it gets besieged by sweden a turncoat captain turns the tide and the town's retaken by the polish lithuanian commonwealth 25 years later it gets it captured again by sweden Eight years after that, it was taken by the Russian army. Now they say because of this Russian army, a quarter of the town and much of the fortifications were blown up, including the bishop's castle. Blown up. All property looted, all citizens deported to Russia. So, not gone. Then you have, throughout the next hundred years, fires destroying much of the architecture. The Great Fire of Tartu, that I briefly mentioned, removed most of the building in the center. It's rebuilt along, you know, some coarse Baroque and neoclassical lines in seven years. And it gets a railway in 1876. And uh, the it's a staging ground for research and involving tuberculosis, occupied by Russia, occupied by Germany. War of Independence, Peace Treaty, Soviet Russia renouncing territorial claims, just kidding, Soviet Union invades and occupies, 1940. Then you have a large part of the city destroyed, including historical bridge by the Soviet Army. And then in 1944 again, the retreating German Army. And then bombed again randomly by Soviet forces in 1943 and 44. And after the war was over, much of the historical area was again in ruin. Now the, say, the entire city blocks were torn down by the occupational authority, turned into parks, declared a closed town, air base for bombers was constructed on carried nuclear bomb now the population doubles after soviet time now estonia's sovereign and now the old tenor has been renovated notably saint john's church so what do we make of that well i think what we're supposed to make of that that nothing original could possibly reign, remain after occupation after occupation it seems like a definitely a seat a little hub of cabal advancements i should say nobel prize winners come from there any things are done in these universities that involve tech companies it's known as the Athens or Heidelberg of the North. Scholars hailing from Tartu include the pioneer of embryology, pioneer of animal behavior studies, cultural theorists study men who go on to explore Alaska, California, Hawaii, Nobel Prize winners, semiotics, which is the study of sign processes and meaning making, you know, logos, signals, anything, kind of an, a potentially nefarious subject matter. And yet, despite all of that, you have a historic infrastructure that appears relatively untouched. I mean, I'm sure the restoration was lengthy 
briefly, and I'm sure they took their time on it, but, you know, a lot of it, if it is reconstructed, it seems to be in very good condition, as evidenced here, here, here. No, it seems like they've done an, a, their excellent job with the restoration, or the damage was overstated. And though I pointed out that there's a vague shape here that suggests potentially that it was a, a star fort, I also feel like there's a lot more to this place than meets the eye. With user-submitted photos like this, no shortage of mud flood building, as you can see here. So are these histories sort of made up? These All these concretes, are just, is it all just literature or just fiction? Or, you know, I don't know. I, I do notice a recurring pattern. Anytime there's a war, uh, no matter what the army that's allegedly fighting, they take great care in destroying these old cities. I understand why a bridge would get destroyed by retreating Russian forces to prevent a crossing. I don't understand why just Stalin would just destroy all the building unless it's under orders of intent for the old world to be continually, gradually destroyed, and that's just an excuse. That's, that's what it seems like to me. And when they say the majority of these buildings were blown up, meaning with dynamite, uh, I fail to see what that does. If you are invading a city and you've taken it over, what, what detonating all the buildings does, except obviously cause the civilians that live there to hate you, unless you're intentionally trying to destroy evidence of something. This canal seeming very, very old world. I know they call it a river, but we've been all through that. And I would guess that there would be so much to be seen here. Just, you know, you hate to see stuff like this progress without a really a chance to look at. But there is still a lot of the historic city here to be seen. They'll never be able to get rid of it. In the future, I, I do anticipate a time will be much harder to find. But these recurring sort of shapes in odd places get easy to explain when you're surrounded by people like of course there's a racetrack of course there's a school there and you just can't help but wonder what came first but a very suspicious place is tartu estonia suspicious by our uh, estimation and it does make you wonder what exactly went on here the next place I'd like to go back and look at closer is Sarzana, Italy. Sarzana, as the story goes, it had military importance, and so due to its position and its constant reconquering and subsequent conquering, strike that, reverse it, these changes left Sarzana a conspicuous fortress run by the city, the kingdom of Sardinia. So, of course, it's got its roots in Catholic possession, cathedrals, citadels, castles, notable locals, and not much else about it. Basically, just kind of existed for a while. The population is now around up northern of 22,000 people of decent size and of course the ever-present Starfort or at least what is suspected to be potential Starfort. Now I don't exactly see a Starfort but I do see the existence of a structure that looks like it's been somewhat repurposed. <laughs> I'm gonna say that the this is a bold statement at the top part uh, was not constructed at the same time bottom. Boom! A bold statement but it has of course some of the shapes that you come to expect this one not even being repurposed as a racetrack or field just leaving it how it is and what i believe these to be are imprints of something else machinery perhaps or uh maybe just a sort of a, a waterway okay artificial waterway created for the purpose of maybe circulation until they needed to use it and it'd siphon off and to pump it into the city i don't i don't know it just i'm just saying how things appear to be appear to be everywhere yes you got another one. this one actually is now a track i just don't know who made the rules of how big these needed to be and why we find them everywhere and why we find them out in the middle of the desert where there's no use for them ever and then of course you have the architecture here looking very similar to everything else that we see in this time period now if this is a fortification a castle the the ability to construct this at its just especially on the fly it's just all but impossible i mean this is so massive i think it was an old power station now they might have used it as a fort later when war was brought to them when when the whole uh, world the whole realm was uh, forced to become warlike which i believe did not come naturally though they try to convince us that it is then that's when these things many things got repurposed or just used as you know the kings would move into the biggest hill the kings move into the biggest structure and that's why you have these ridiculous situations where it's like a massive castle with only no bathrooms in it. Well, I guess you could choose to believe that people were that stupid. I think you build that castle this big, but they didn't, they hadn't figured out how to use the restroom properly or plan for that. <laughs> or is it more likely that they, these things didn't have restrooms because they weren't for living in? <laughs> that means they served some other purpose. And I can't imagine what you would put such effort into if you weren't planning on people staying here unless it served the purpose that was more industrial. Hence the idea.
idea what these are. Power plants of some sort. Harvesting energy through water in a way that we do not know. Or in a way that's been kept from us. This roof obviously added later. This roof probably added later. I mean, and houses built on and around them. Structures built on and around them. I'm not saying it was never used as a fort, but I don't think it's original purpose. And here's another one over here. Which, again, this looks as if this is all designed for water collection. I know you could say to yourself, if you watched one of these, you, you watched all of them. As I seem to just keep repeating myself. But that's what this is. This is observation, and if you see the same thing, it's no going to spin it a new way every time. Like, this is the prevailing theory. And what I'm presenting are the evidence. And evidence can be boring, so, <laughs> I don't know. If you don't like it, get off my channel. So, there you have it. Sarzana, Italy. It goes without saying, I loved visiting these places. I would love to just actually be there. There, boots on the ground, poking at rocks, and trying to piece together what this weird world is all about. And I know they don't really want us looking around and seeing things like this. This is a restricted area. I'm really glad that they drove this way. So I get to look at this wall. Concrete and rebar, like modern made, which I believe it. The irony of it is, is that this is probably made the exact same way as the ones that we think they're ancient. In other words, they're not carved from blocks of stone. They're made with concrete. That's how we learned how to do it from the ancients. In order to pretend like it's something different, that we are different to erode the connection we have with our past, they would say, these people looked like this and they did this and they were furthest from us. Look at their clothes. It's so far from us. And look at their, their hair and their customs and their barbarism. They're, they were fools. This is, you know, today is progress. Today we can read. We we have education, we can write, we're smarter, we know more about health, our lives are longer, we're taller, we're... and it's all a lie. It's all a lie. There have been some advances, absolutely. There's also a great many things that are setbacks. And the majority of the advances, excepting some of the uh, more digital electronics, is in many ways, I believe, more advanced beyond us. In simple ways. Not like they were floating around with robot friends. <laughs> but they knew how to use the earth. They knew how it worked. They knew how to make it function without damaging it. And they weren't slaves. And none of us can say the same. Beautiful place, Sarzana. Moving on. We get here, this Il Havo, Portugal. And yes, in this massive complex, it is rather foolhardy to see one little point like this and say this is for sure a star fort, admittedly. But from a different angle, you can see some of the shape here, the size of the blocks here, some of the familiar shapes here, lighthouse. And there's a few user-submitted photographs. Here's the canal, these old lighthouses out here. No telling how they even had electricity. Seen better days part of this area, yeah? And while it's a bustling industry now, when you're down here, you see that the portion that's being suspicioned as a star fort is full of these old war bricks, and very well could be. I mean, it is in an area that seems to be getting destroyed for being possibly historical or just old in general. And then you have this inexplicable little oval here that seems to exist really for no reason. I'm not sure. And this place is... Definitely got some old, old world mystery to it, as evidenced perhaps best by this here chapel, with the looking like a, a tower that has been completely gutted and repurposed. Technology missing from here, here, here. Put a little clock in there as if that's what it was meant for. And you have the, the uh, old bulbs or capacitors, whichever they are. The antenna now converted into a cross. The swirl on the columns showcasing the, the upward pole and possibly the illumination coming out from here and here. I don't. And looking gutted, this this once possibly having either this being a hole for sound, like a subwoofer, beaming out this sort of energy or some other purpose. But yeah, looking very gutted. And now it's just a cathedral from when the church occupied it to be my guess those do-getters and none of that obviously very believable aside from that this il havo site is kind of funny it's clearly written by someone who just loves their town because it's you know the women are famous for their great beauty <laughs> it's argued about whether or not the greek colonists or the phoenician settlers are responsible for any of this it's known as the city of the lamp which is interesting uh according to legend because one of the most important relics of the church an oil lamp was stolen in front of everybody and yet never found and that's, I just don't to make it, that's the word. There must be more to it, either that or it's ridiculous. Here you have the municipality day is Easter Monday, and the mood of the people are happy, energetic, daring, and creative, daring daily, you know, the work adventure. This is really written by propagandists, like someone's trying to get you to travel there. It's well written, and it, and it does make me want to go there. I'm not trying to go throw shade, but it's not very historic. And there's nothing else really about this, at least on Scriptopedia, which we use to uh, basically just look at what the mainstream stories. We don't really look at it for any actual information, but it's sort of the lie that we break. Down. So, Il Havo, an interesting little place. I'd love to hear and know more about it. Moving on to Kilikap, Indonesia, or Silikap? I'm not sure if I'm saying that properly. This being a very fragmented look, if it is indeed a member of the Stafford family, then it is one that is slowly fading out of recognition. 
dinosaur. Now down here, you do find that once you're there, it's a different story. It's less of a stretch. Whereas from up there, you say, wow, yeah, right. And it doesn't really look like it. But down here, it's like, oh, oh yeah, 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 I see it. I mean, this is, this is some old ass brick and this canal is looking very i mean they're swimming in it which is great looking very ancient the whole thing i mean i'm so grateful for that picture because there just aren't very many pictures of this place there is evidence of the silver dome and that uh, that's how they were powering the area we're using that resonator to bring light and energy to this little lively area it looks like they're, they're doing something else here now these old silos but at one point this was something else you see here the cladding kind of coming off the top and revealing the brick underneath so the cladding obviously much newer the brick being part of the original structure and now it's just sort of part of the uh part of the background part of the wilderness as it were that you kind of stroll around and wonder about you know and you gotta think that people that walk through here are like wow who made this what is this for and then they're told something a little story about it like yeah, okay all right, must be and they move on and they don't think about it anymore. even this flooring is kind of funny like they just ran out of material here or somebody stole it all and they just never replaced it or it looks like here's like a double layer of it like it's not even the original layer and they didn't even bother putting it here so i'm wondering this is just maybe a wheelchair ramp accessible probably and this looking like they were was maybe once a beam went across here it's just eroded out i don't know but it's uh it's definitely a water works of some sort but what else would the point of this be they didn't make it for beauty and so yet again there it is hiding just just hiding in there on this little tip of this little place maybe it is a ch sound here chili chap apparently it's a regency which i don't know what that is to be honest with you but it has a population of 1.6 million people seaport of some important the harbor is protected by an island called Naskambangan known as the site of several high security correctional facilities. Interesting. Which this island took the worst of the tsunami and sheltered the port. During World War II, many of the Dutch fled to Australia from here. There's a geothermal power plant, a cement plant. Interesting. It's a very industrial area, and they're kind of fouled up from leakage of shipping vessels. So there's also an old Dutch fortress built in stages over, oh, 20 years. Dutch East Indies Army, war told. Word for buried fort. It's an abandoned Dutch fort. And I'm going to say, bullshit. The Pentagon-shaped Benteng Pendem has a excavated moat 1,600 feet long, 6 to 10 inches deep. Around the fortress, there are, of course, 11 places where cannons were. Right, right. A prison. Mm-hmm. A long tunnel. Bricks covered in plaster are located under 10 feet of dirt, giving the fortress its popular name from a distance resembling a mound. Then the swing slides and dinosaurs were added. No shit, they didn't have them when it was a fort. Now they say the early 19th century, they built this fort. According to local legend, the Sunan of Suracata, Pakubon Pakubuono, the fort, was the fourth Susu. <laughs> but essentially he ruled here from 1788 to 1820 and they believe that the dutch fort was built over this fort then they say that during the Japanese occupation, the, the Japanese took over the fort, where it was returned to the Dutch. Then finally, the Indonesian army was able to finally take it over. Then it fell into disrepair in the 60s, covered in sand. Excavated 20 years later, finally opened up for tourism, though dangerous areas were fenced off. Said to be haunted, and has been used as a filming location for tests of bravery. Haunted by the ghosts of its past. Here's the moat. Jarvis, revolution. <laughs> I mean, resolution. Looking almost as if it were an old subway station here you have what was possibly hinges on giant doors perhaps this look like a fort to you for what purpose would this be in the fort yes barracks with these massive doors yes of course very wide soldier nah more like water plants generating power of some sort and look at this right here on the floor what do we have here what these motorcycles are parked on that would be a six-pointed star wouldn't it yeah pretty amazing stuff there another uh, ancient city sort of being passed off as a modern creation <laughs> of course they'd build a power plant right on the side of this one here <laughs> i mean this is the uh new version of this, this new version of this crazy if you're still watching at this point well i I'm glad and thankful for you. And hopefully it's been somewhat interesting. And hopefully you don't take my word for anything. Hopefully you just get out there to some of these places if you can and look around. Tell me what you think. Fires. Fires. Fires.